Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bold and Beautiful podcast, where we are discussing all things bold and beautiful. I'm your host, Amanda, and I've decided to name this week's episode A Perfect Show because Steffi's fashion show went off completely drama free. And on this show, that is rare. I want to apologize for the episode being so late this week. I had a very busy weekend. I had my very first Thanksgiving meal. Me and my husband, the way our families are, we have to go to multiple Thanksgivings. So this weekend I had our first, we had our first Thanksgiving with my sister And it was a lot of fun, but you know how it goes. You're busy, you have to cook, you have to clean, and it just took up a lot of my weekend. So thank you guys for being patient. And I feel like it's better late than never, right? Okay, guys, so I don't have any news for this week. I do want to say I think it was absolutely awesome that Jacqueline Woods who plays Steffi, would model lingerie being six months pregnant. So shout out to her because that is awesome. All right, enough of the chit chat. Let's get to the recap. So that brings us into Monday, November the 5th. The show opens at Spencer Publications and we're in Bill's office with Justin and Bill. Bill, of course, is flipping out over getting the information from Justin's contacts. He wants answers, and he wants answers now. So then Bill tells Justin that he is going to go visit Will without Katie's permission. And Justin says, do you think that's such a good idea? But Bill doesn't care. And by the way, if Bill finds out what Ridge did, I think he might kill him. Now we head over to Eric's house and everyone is still at the dinner. And they're all waiting for Quinn to get back so they can have dessert. Katie and Thorne mention that they still want to take a honeymoon, but they don't really want to be away from Will for that long, but they would have to get Bill's permission to take Will out of the country. And of course, Ridge quickly points out that Katie doesn't need Bill's permission because she has full custody. And as usual, Brooke starts defending Bill. Really? I I don't get it. Stop, Brooke. So this makes Ridge feel uncomfortable and he, he, him and Brooke go to the kitchen to, to talk alone. But they say they're going to go get dessert. So when they get into the kitchen, Ridge asks her why she feels the need to always defend Bill, especially at family dinner. Because Ridge hates it. And basically Brooke says, look, you dug Bill's grave I just don't want you, I don't want to sit there and watch you dance on it. So at this point, Ridge is getting aggravated and he asks Brooke point blank, why are you defending him? Why? So then Brooke explains that she doesn't like any of this. That the whole situation bothers her. And the fact that Ridge and Thorne make light of everything, she thinks is ridiculous. And then she finally admits that it still bothers her to see Ridge and Quinn together. And that it also bothers her that Ridge would go to the judge behind her back. And the person Ridge is becoming is scaring her. Because he's acting the way Bill would act. And she stresses that she's just so upset because they could have went to jail. And they and they seem to think this is funny. And she says, this is not the Ridge that I know. And then, of course, Ridge, he, he, of course, he defends himself. So he basically says that he is protecting the people that he loves. And sometimes to protect the people you love, you have to get your hands dirty. So then Brooke says, you know, how can you hate someone so much that you would commit a crime? How do you hate someone so much that you would be pushed into committing a crime? And Ridge feels that Bill got what he deserves and he would do it all over again. Now we head over to Forrester Creations in the showroom with Quinn and Wyatt. And Quinn tells Wyatt that she is so happy 
that he got her out of that stupid family dinner. And Wyatt, being a good son, as usual, tries to calm Quinn down. She thinks, Quinn thinks that Pam and the Logan sisters are trying to undermine her relationship with Eric. But Wyatt is really concerned that Quinn is going to revert back to pre-Eric Quinn. And he tells her not to screw it up. That she, she needs to calm down and not screw up her relationship with Eric. And his pep talk works. And she decides that he's right and she should head back home. Now we head back over to Eric's and we're in the living room and Ridge and Brooke have joined everyone else again and Brooke informs them that she is going to walk next door to see Will because she has a headache and she tells Ridge that he should stay. So meanwhile in the kitchen Eric and Donna are doing the dishes and they're reminiscing and flirting and having fun back and forth. But what they don't know is that Quinn has arrived home and is watching their whole conversation. And she looks mad. Donna actually gets out the bottle of honey. Because you know she calls Eric Honey Bear. And she was very flirty. And Quinn is not happy. Eric gets a phone call and he leaves to go into his office. So, Quinn walks into the kitchen, and as you might guess, she tells Donna real quick that Eric has long forgotten all about the stupid honey bear thing, and that she needs to stop flirting with her husband, because he is happy with her. And Donna tries to play innocent, like she doesn't know what Quinn's talking about, but Quinn explains that if she tries to get her hooks in Eric, she will destroy Donna. Back out in the living room, Katie gives Thorne and Ridge some advice. They should lay off of the comments about the man who didn't press charges. And then Ridge tells them that he didn't mean to upset Brooke, but he can't have her always defending Spencer because it's infuriating. So now we head across the street to Katie's house. Bill is there and he sent the babysitter home and he is playing and having fun and spending time with Will. So it's time for Will to go to bed. So Bill puts him to bed and when he comes back downstairs, his phone rings and it's Justin. And Justin tells him that he finally heard from his contact. And his contact told him that the pictures looked just like Ridge. And that the guy thinks that it was Ridge. Bill is pissed. And then Brooke walks into the house. And he hangs up the phone with Justin. And he immediately starts questioning Brooke. He wants to know what's bothering her. Because he thinks that he knows. So he tells her. That he found out something about Ridge. And Brooke quickly tries to change the subject. But Bill brings it back to Ridge. And he explains that Justin found out that someone saw Ridge meeting with the judge. And how he thinks Ridge influenced the judge to make him lose custody. And he wants Brooke to tell him the truth. He wants her to tell him everything that she knows. And that's how Monday ends. So that brings us into Tuesday, November the 6th. The show opens at Katie's house with Bill and Brooke. Bill is still questioning Brooke. He wants to know what she knows about Ridge and the judge. And he continues to badger her. And she's very uncomfortable. And you can tell that she is not happy that he's there and she suddenly tells him that she doesn't know anything she has to go and she takes off and she goes back to Eric's house because now she's really freaked out back over at Eric's house in the living room with Katie Ridge and Thorne Ridge is venting to Katie and Thorne that Brooke just can't seem to get past what he did with the judge and he hates that Brooke always defends Bill. 
And then he comments that he doesn't understand why Brooke can't just get over the whole hearing thing. Now we head into the kitchen with Donna and Quinn. And Quinn is accusing Donna of wanting to get Eric back. And Donna explains that if Eric is really happily married, then Quinn has nothing to worry about, right? So Donna doesn't understand why Quinn is acting this way. But Quinn lets her know that she is not going to allow Donna to cause any problems for her and Eric. And then she gets the bottle of honey and she pours it down the drain. Now we head back out to the living room. Brooke comes into the house and Katie's in the living room alone when Brooke arrives. And Brooke explains to Katie that Bill is at her house and he let the babysitter go and he is with Will. So Katie wants to make sure that Brooke is okay and Brooke assures her that she is. Then Ridge and Thorne return back into the living room and before Brooke has a chance to tell Katie anything else, Donna also comes in. And then Donna asks if the stories about Quinn are true and Katie tells her that she will explain when they get home. So they all decide to call it a night and everyone leaves except for Brooke and Ridge. And poor Brooke is freaking out. And Ridge tells Brooke that he is very, very sorry for how he behaved and he doesn't want to fight because he loves her and they will work it out. Okay, guys, so um, we are going to be doing a lot of bouncing back and forth. Um, this episode, we are all over the place. So now we're going to head back over to Katie's house and they all three have arrived home and Bill is there. Which Thorne obviously doesn't like. But Katie says that it's perfectly fine. It's okay. Then Bill starts saying things that could be taken in different ways. Little things like the truth is really important. And he never realized how important knowing the truth is. And he wishes that he knew why the judge ruled against him. And he's fishing basically. No one says anything, but they're clearly uncomfortable, and Bill leaves. So, Katie and Thorne want to know what's up with Donna. So, Donna explains that things got a little dicey with Quinn in the kitchen, and she tells them what happened, and she says that she just wants to make sure Eric's happy. So, Thorne and Katie both look at each other, and they both think that maybe Donna still has feelings for Eric. So then Thorne goes upstairs to get ready for bed. And Katie tells Donna that Brooke didn't want Ridge to know that she was alone over here with Bill earlier. And that secrets are never good because they always seem to come out. So now we head back over to Eric's house. And we're in the living room with Eric and Quinn. And Quinn wants to know what the tension was all about with Brooke and Ridge. And Eric answers, what do you think? Bill, of course. So Quinn assures Eric that she will always have his back no matter what. He doesn't have to worry. Now we go over to Bill's house. And he gets a text from Justin. And Justin is just letting him know that he's still working on getting more evidence against Ridge. Now we head to Brooke's house and we're up in her bedroom with Brooke and Ridge. Ridge and Brooke are still arguing about Bill, but they both want to get past it. So Brooke tells Ridge that sometimes things are out of their control and Ridge wants to know what she means. But Brooke decides not to tell Ridge about running into Bill at Katie's house, which I think is a mistake. She should have told him immediately. Like, she should have walked in Katie's house, saw that Bill was there, got her stuff, and left immediately, went straight back to Eric's, and told Ridge. Because you know he's jealous, you know he's going to be mad, like, why, why? You shouldn't be keeping secrets. I agree with Katie. So, um, Brooke decides not to tell Ridge about running into Bill, and R then Ridge goes to take a shower, and... Of course, Brooke's phone rings, and guess who it is? Bill. 
It's very, very annoying because no matter how many times she tells him to leave her alone, he will not do it. And that is infuriating. So she answers the phone and immediately he starts asking her if she knows anything about Ridge and the judge. And then he begs her to rat Ridge out. But Brooke tells him that it's not a good time for her to talk right now and that she has to go. And she hangs up on him. And that's how Tuesday ends. So that brings us in to Wednesday, November the 7th. The show opens at Spencer Publications in Bill's office with Bill and Justin. Bill wants answers, and he is convinced that Ridge is guilty. And Justin agrees that it does look really fishy. So Justin tells Bill that he needs to calm down and keep a level head because they have to have concrete evidence to do anything. And then Bill tells Justin, don't worry, we will get it. And I think this worries Justin a little bit. So Justin says, I know it looks, it looks fishy, but without proof, it's his word against ours. And Bill thinks that Brooke is the key to the truth. But I don't agree. I do not think that Brooke will rat Ridge out because she loves him. Now we head over to Forrester Creations in the executive office with Brooke, Ridge, and Steffi. Ridge and Steffi are super excited for the fashion show. And Ridge asks Brooke if she has any tips or advice for Steffi. But Brooke is clearly distracted and she gives a generic answer. Like, um, you've done all you can do, just go with the flow. And Steffi thinks, um, okay, <laughs> like that's a generic answer, but okay. So Brooke is clearly worried because Bill knows. And Ridge notices Brooke is completely in her head. And he wants to know what's bothering her. And I'm like, why won't she just tell him already? She does not have to suffer with this burden alone. She needs to tell him. So, uh, Steffi seems to think that Brooke is not excited for her. Because of hope. And all the hope for the future stuff. And Ridge is kind of surprised because he says, I thought we were past that. And Brooke tells him that how can he be surprised that she's disappointed for her daughter? And she says in front of Steffi that Ridge has made some pretty questionable decisions lately that she doesn't like. Now we head downstairs in the showroom. Everyone's getting ready for the show, for the fashion show. And Wyatt tells Quinn that he can't believe they went from their small little jewelry business to all of this. And Quinn agrees and they hug it out. Across the room, Danny, Zoe, and Xander are all talking about the show. And they are assuring Xander that once he gets out there, he will be fine. Not to worry. Then Zoe touches Xander's arm. And of course, Emma just happens to be... She happens to walk by and see this, and it upsets her, so she walks off and she runs right into Hope. And Hope asks, her, Hope asks Emma if she is okay, and Emma says, yeah, she's hanging in there. And it, Emma tells Hope that it must be really hard for her because of the whole Hope for the Future thing. And Hope assures Emma that... Not to worry, Hope for the Future will be back. So now we go back across the room to where the models are. And Xander comments to Danny that it is crazy how him and Zoe ended up modeling for the same company in a, in a whole other country. And then Danny says some people would call that fate. But... That's because he doesn't know the real story of how they ended up together. If he knew the real story of how she stalked him, then he probably wouldn't say that. So across the room on the other side, Ridge and Steffi enter the showroom. And Steffi gets everyone's attention and gives them a pep talk. And Ridge adds that he wants everyone to give their all to this show and it will be a success. Then Hope 
walks up to Steffi to wish her good luck with the fashion show. And Steffi's a little surprised that Hope is not staying for the show. But Hope says that it still stings a little and that she would prefer not to stay. And I think Steffi understands. So back to Xander and Zoe. Xander thanks Zoe for helping him with modeling tips and that he really appreciates her being there for him. And then Steffi tells everyone that it's it's almost Tom and they're going to rock this show. Back upstairs in the executive office with Hope and Brooke. And Hope can tell that something is wrong with Brooke and she wants to know what's going on. And Hope looks so cute, by the way, because she's really, really showing now. So anyway, Brooke explains that she's having problems with Ridge and that she doesn't like the decisions that Ridge has been making lately because they are affecting everyone she loves. Back down in the showroom, everyone is running around getting last minute things ready and uh, Wyatt and Emma are task tasked with taking behind the scenes photos and um, of course... Zoe and Xander are uh, together and she has to take a picture of them and it's clearly uncomfortable. Now we head back to Bill's office and Bill is scheming to try and find a way to get Brooke to turn on Ridge. He thinks that he can crack Brooke and that he can make her come around. But I just don't agree. That's She's not going to rat out Ridge. She's in love with him. So, back upstairs at Forrester Creations in the executive office, Hope had to leave. And so, Brooke is in there just basically worrying. So, Ridge walks in and he says, all right, enough is enough. What's wrong? So, Brooke admits that it's it's not about the lines. It's about Bill. And after a little bit of going back and forth and she still kind of taken up for Bill, which is making Ridge matter, and it's just like, why are you doing this? So anyway, she finally spits it out that Bill is on to Ridge, and that Bill thinks that there is a connection between Judge McMullins and Ridge, and that she is worried and scared, and that's how Wednesday ends. So that brings us into Thursday, November the 8th. The show opens at Forrester Creations in the showroom and it's bustling with activity because everyone is busy getting ready for the show and Steffi is doing press interviews and Xander is super happy because his Aunt Viv and Uncle Julius came to support him. And then of course, Zoe has to butt into their convo and make she makes Xander introduce her to them. Then Steffi gets done with her interview and she is making her rounds, checking on everyone to make sure every everything's going okay and everyone is doing what they're supposed to do. And she also notices that she doesn't see Ridge anywhere. So Sally walks up to Steffi and she asks if it would be okay if her grandmother came to the show. And Steffi allowed it. Which was really nice of her. She said that that would be fine. So that made Sally really happy. Now we head back upstairs in the executive office with Ridge and Brooke. And Ridge is confused. He doesn't know what Brooke is talking about. And he says, what do you mean Bill's caught on? So Brooke explains that Bill reached out to her with his suspicions. And that she is very worried because Bill is not going to let this go. And she basically explains everything about someone saw him meeting with the judge and Ridge is trying to brush it off, but it's bothering him. So Ridge assures Brooke that it will all be okay and that Bill obviously doesn't have proof or he would have already been there with the police. And Brooke tells Ridge that she needs to spend the day with Hope because Hope is having a hard time with everything. And, you know, she's still a little upset about Hope for the future. 
So, uh, Ridge says, okay, that he understands, and then he goes down to the showroom to support Steffi. Now we head over to Spencer Publications in Bill's office. Bill is furious that Ridge had the nerve to influence the judge, and he assures Justin that he will not let Ridge get away with this. Then Bill asks Justin to track Brooke down for him. Because she probably needs a friend today. And Justin says, yeah, right, a friend. Really? Really? He's stalking her again. If she wanted to tell you, or she wanted to talk to you, she would. But she doesn't. God, stalker. Now, we head back to Forrester Creations. It is fashion show time. So, the show is starting, and Wyatt introduces the Intimates line. All the lingerie is really, really pretty. I'm not going to go into each design, because it's just too... I mean, lingerie is lingerie. It would be difficult to explain, but there, everything was really pretty. And I do really like that they have both female and male options. I think that's really smart. So, so far, everything is going as planned, no drama. So, Zoe walks out, and she obviously loves the attention. You can tell she is loving walking the runway. And meanwhile, backstage, Sally is having a little bit of a meltdown. And Wyatt tells her she looks gorgeous. And that everything will be fine and not to worry. So that makes her feel better. Now across the room, Steffi finally runs into Ridge. And she wants to know what he thinks. So he assures her that he thinks everything is just beautiful. But Steffi is very smart and very perceptive. And she clearly can tell that something is up with her dad. And it bothers her because he won't tell her what it is. So next, Xander comes out, and as nervous as he was, he actually did really good. He looked quite comfortable on the runway, and his aunt and uncle were going nuts cheering for him. So next, Sally is up, and of course, she also does a great job, and her grams is going crazy cheering for her, and uh, she looked beautiful. They all, everyone looked beautiful. So, all the models, Danny and the other models that uh, we do not know, they all ro walk the runway. Everyone looks fabulous. And now it's time for the showstopper. And Steffi is the one modeling the showstopper. And she looks amazing. I cannot get over that she's modeling while pregnant. Well, modeling the lingerie while pregnant. Because I just would never have the nerve to do that, but that's just awesome, you go girl, and you know, she looked great, like I would, I hope that if I ever have children, I would look that good while I was pregnant, I mean, <laughs> she just, she was stunning, so she did great, and everyone loved the show, everyone was raving about it, and the press loved it, and the show went off without any drama whatsoever. So that was surprising. So backstage, Steffi and Ridge are so happy. And Ridge tells her that he is so, so proud of her and her line. And everyone is celebrating. And then Ridge walks off to go text Brooke because... Even though he's really happy for Steffi, he's really worried about Brooke and himself. And he has a moment where he imagines that the police come with Bill to arrest him. And that makes him really start to get worried. So he texts Brooke that he wants to see her and continue their talk from earlier. Now we head over to Il Giardino. Where Brooke is supposed to be having lunch with Hope. But Hope had to cancel because she wasn't feeling well. And before Brooke can get up to leave, she was just about to get up and leave. Guess who shows up? Yep, Bill. 
Really? So Brooke is about to have a nervous breakdown and Bill is not helping, that's for sure. And Bill, he just keeps pressuring her and pressuring her and pressuring her to betray Ridge. And she's obviously getting very upset. He keeps going on and on about the truth and how Brooke needs to tell him everything she knows and it's not right and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, because Bill always tells the truth, right? He's not a lying, scheming bastard, no. He always tells the truth, right? Yeah, right. So, um, he's just pressuring her and pressuring her and he finally says, you have to tell me the truth right now. And that's how Thursday ends. So that brings us into Friday, November the 9th, which was my husband's birthday. I forgot to tell y'all about that. So that's another reason why I was really busy because it was my husband's birthday Friday and I had a lot of stuff to do to get ready for his birthday. So that brings us into Friday and the show opens at Forrester Creations in the executive office with Ridge and he is doing a press conference and Katie is also there helping. So they wrap it up. And everyone leaves the office except for Katie. And she wants to know what's up with Ridge. Because something is obviously bothering him. So he admits that it's Spencer. He tells Katie that he's really, really worried. Because Bill is questioning if he knows the judge. And how he's connected to the judge. And everyone knows that Bill never lets anything go so bill's not gonna let this go but ridge completely trusts brooke and he knows that she will not say anything but that doesn't mean he's gonna stop so now we head over to il giardino's and bill is still trying to pressure brooke into ratting ridge out but she is in love with ridge so she's not going to do that i hope anyway so that's it. Brooke has had enough and she gets up to leave and she tells Bill, you need to let this go and spend time with your son. Look what you're doing again. Do not let this become an obsession. You say you've changed, then prove it. And she leaves. So then, of course, immediately Bill calls Justin and he wants him to contact Ken, the computer whiz. Because he has a job for him. So of course he's not going to listen to her. That's obvious. Now we head over to Forrester Creations in the showroom. And Zoe wants Xander to go out with her and the other models to celebrate. But Xander tells Zoe that he already has plans with Emma. And that she should go ahead and go out with everyone and celebrate. This makes Zoe mad. Because she wants Xander to celebrate with her and not em- and not Emma. So Zoe tells Xander that he did good and he was a natural. And that she really thought that he would want to celebrate with the other models. And then she starts putting Emma down. Calling her little Emma and just being rude. So finally Xander says, Zoe look, you go have fun. Tell everyone I said congratulations, but I already have plans. Then Emma walks into the showroom and reluctantly Zoe leaves them alone, but she's clearly not happy about it. And basically Xander explains to Emma that she's the only person he wants to celebrate with and that he's ready to take their relationship to the next level. Well, I was very surprised at Emma's answer and her reaction. Um, She did something that shocked pretty much everyone, I think. Basically, she explained that she's not ready to take their relationship to the next level. She's not ready to sleep with him. She explains that she wants to put... All of her energy and attention 
to her dancing and her work and that she's just not ready for the relationship that he wants to have. And Xander is shocked by this and he obviously sees that she is breaking up with him and he is trying to talk her out of it. But it's clearly not working. So poor Xander is in shock that she's breaking up with him. And she tells him that they are just in two different places. And that she feels like she needs to let him go so that he can do what he wants. And uh, that way she can focus on the things that are important to her. And I really feel sorry for Xander because I feel like he got completely blindsided by this. But um, I also respect Emma's position. If she's not ready, then she's not ready. And she shouldn't be pressured. Now we head upstairs in the executive office with Katie and Ridge. And um, Brooke walks into the office and she asks, um, what is going on here? So Katie explains that Ridge is worried about Bill. And Brooke tells them both that she just ran into Bill at the restaurant And he is not going to stop digging. And this is bad. Then she explains to Katie and Ridge that uh, Bill is not going to stop. That he's obsessed and he will not stop until he finds the truth. Now Ridge is worried. Now he obviously is worried. Meanwhile, across the hall in the side office with Wyatt and Zoe... Zoe is clearly sad and pouting because she is upset about Xander. So Wyatt asks her what's wrong and she explains everything. That she thought Xander would want her back. But instead he only has Emma on the brain. So Wyatt tries to comfort Zoe and he tells her that she needs to move on. That she has a lot going for her and she should move on and have fun. Um, hello. Why can't Zoe get with Carter? Why can't someone get with Carter? This is ridiculous. So, um, that was really sweet of Wyatt, though, to try to make her feel better. Now, we head back to Spencer Publications in Bill's office with Justin and Ken, the computer whiz. He has just arrived, and he informs Bill that he wants his tea before he starts working so of course bill's like oh my gosh rolling his eyes but he gets him a c so bill and justin explain exactly what's going on to ken and bill basically says what we need you to do is hack the judge's cell phone so that we could see the messages and get the truth That way we'll know if him and Ridge were talking previous to the hearing. So Ken works for a little while and of course Bill and Justin are waiting and Bill is very impatient. But Ken does some magic and he does his work and boom. He tells Bill that he's in. He's into the judge's cell phone. And Bill gets all excited and he says, yes, no one outsmarts Bill Spencer. And that's how Friday ends. So that brings us to the end of the episode. I think that Brooke and Ridge and Thorne and Katie, I think they're all about to be in some major hot water. Katie could possibly lose Will altogether. Because she knew about it and didn't say anything. They all could get in trouble. And I'm not sure how Bill is going to play this. He may try to pretend like he's this changed guy. But basically keep it in his pocket and use it as blackmail. Or use it against Ridge whenever it's convenient. Or he may decide to get them thrown in jail. I'm not sure but I know that Bill finding out the truth is not gonna be good for anyone it's not I also think that Donna 
and Pam are definitely going to cause some issues between Eric and Quinn. I'm not sure if it's going to be big enough to break them up, but I definitely think it's going to cause some major, major, major drama for Eric and Quinn. And Hope is getting bigger and bigger, so hopefully soon we will have a baby. So I'm excited for that. I wonder what they're going to name this baby girl. I'm not sure. I would love to know. I want to know what you guys think about this week. And I also would love to know your baby names. So get in touch with me. You can visit my website at theboldandbeautifulpodcast.com. You can also follow me on all my socials. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I want you guys to send me your baby names. I've been trying to think, what would Hope want to name this baby? But I just, I'm at a loss. So, I'd love to hear your ideas. So, get in touch with me. And I hope you guys have a great week. Until next time. Bye, guys.